Welcome to a beautiful wildflower meadow at Fontanellas on the Lower Derwent Valley National Nature Reserve. It's teeming with life. But let's say I don't just want wildflowers here, I also want them here at Levin Cars, about 40 miles east. How would I go about it? Let's find out. This is Levin Cars. It might not look much from a distance, all wind turbines and agricultural crops, but at its heart is Levin Canal's site of special scientific interest, important for wetland vegetation. This whole area was once a giant wetland habitat, but the land was drained for agriculture during the 18th century, and so the canal became the last refuge of the once plentiful wetland species. A large habitat creation project is underway to expand the wetland habitat, buffer it against changes, and connect it with other nearby remnants. Here's Natural England's Chris McGregor to explain more. Yeah, well, we've been working with the uh, company that own Lima Cars, Old and Wise Limited, for a number of years, uh, developing the project from sort of a feasibility stage uh, to see if the habitats that we wanted to create could physically be created on the site. Um, and then we've moved through those stages into a high level stewardship agreement with them, which has then provided the funding for the capital works that we've just completed this year. The actual process to create a new wildflower habitat is fairly simple. Like most projects in wildlife conservation, it involves moving things from one place to another. But what are we moving? Green hay. When the meadow at Thorntonella's has finished flowering, it was full of seed heads, the raw material for the new meadows. The meadow was cut using an Allen scythe, a fancy lawnmower. These cuttings are the green hay, but the actual green parts aren't what's valuable, it's the seed that we want. The green hay is loaded onto a trailer and transported to the new site, in this case, Levin Cars. The seed-rich hay is spread thinly over areas where the new habitat is required. It's spread thinly because if the layer is too thick, the hay rots to form a black sludge that chokes any new growth. A portion of the seed will germinate, and eventually, the local vegetation will take on aspects of the donor wetland site. It can be a long process, and some areas may need another covering of green hay in subsequent years. So. Why not just plough up the area and plant commercially bought seed? Fen habitat and the seed that we would get from that habitat is, is it's not um, it's not large chunks of it if you like in this part of the world. Um, commercially bought seed is expensive, and to try and do that on the scale that we're looking at at Leven would would, be, would have been largely prohibitive. Finally, what about the donor site? Have we trashed a perfectly good meadow to create a new habitat elsewhere? Well, no. The meadow would have been cut anyway, as it is every year, following on from traditional management that stretches back around a thousand years. The special plants here thrive in low nutrient conditions. The plants need to be cut, and the cuttings removed, or else vegetation will rot down on site. This will increase soil fertility, and allow generalists to colonise and cause the habitat to lose its unique assemblage of species. Well, that concludes our whistle-stop tour of habitat creation. If you're a landowner and want to create a wildflower habitat, why not contact your local Natural England representative to discuss more details? However, if you only own a small piece of land, like a garden, or even a plant pot, but still want to help nature, then we've got a video for you in the near future. Until next time.